Good morning, and welcome to your weekly message from First Congregational Church, Milford, New Hampshire. I'm your pastor, Al Hoyt. Today is Thursday, July 8th. So, we had a really great um, worship experience last Sunday. It was so wonderful to be back in the sanctuary, to hear the organ. Um, I got a chance to play some drums, and that made it just that much more fun. Um, and we will be outdoors as much as possible, but it's nice to know that we can move in the indoors safely and continue our worship. Um, our outdoor worship will be at 10 o'clock in person and live streamed, um, indoors or outdoors, depends on the weather. Um, there's not much else going on. Just if it looks like we're going to be outdoors, make sure you bring a chair. Um, Thursday, at the July 15th from 9.30 a.m. until 12 p.m., uh, the Garden Friends will be meeting, as they do almost every week. Um, on Sunday, July 18th, we'll have our outdoor service. And then at 3 o'clock on, on July 18th, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, we will be going to Holman Stadium in Nashua to watch a Nashua Silver Knights baseball game. Um, we have a few seats available still. Um, it's, the seats are $22, and that includes all food and beverages. So we'd love to see you come join us. The last time we went, we had a grand time, and it was two years ago. So um, I hope that if anyone's interested, uh, like I said, we have about four seats left. So looking forward to it. And there's not much else going, as I said. <clears throat> I was reading earlier today, and something that I, a book that I read a lot of, it's called This I Believe. Um, this is a series of books that the personal philosophies of remarkable men and women. And I don't know if you remember Helen Hayes. Helen Hayes was originally in the 1950 This I Believe series, and she was known as the first lady of American theater. She was one of the first people to win an Emmy, an Oscar, a Grammy, and a Tony Award. One of the first one to do it. The only other woman that I know of that did it was Rita Moreno. And Helen wrote a story for this book called A Morning Prayer in a Little Church. Once, years ago, I got into a dogfight. I was wheeling a baby carriage, my pet cocker spaniel trotting along beside me, and without warning, three dogs, an Afghan, a St. Bernard, and a Dalmatian, pounced on the cocker and started tearing him to pieces. I shrieked for help. Two men in a car stopped, looked, and drove on. When I saw that, I was so infuriated that I waded in and stopped the fight myself. My theatrical training never stood me in better stead. My shouts were so authoritative, my gestures so arresting, that I commanded the situation like a lion tamer, and the dogs finally slunk away. Looking back, I think I acted less in anger than from the realization that I was on my own, that if anybody was going to help me at that moment, it had to be myself. Life seems to be a series of crises that have to be faced. In summoning strength to face them, though, I once fooled myself into an exaggerated regard of my own importance. I felt very independent, and I was only distantly aware of other people. I worked hard and was successful in the theater. I was brought up in the tradition of service. The audience pays its money, and you are expected to give your best performance, both on stage and off. So I served on committees, I made speeches, I backed causes, but somehow the meaning of these things escaped me. When my daughter died of polio, everybody stretched out a hand to help me, but at first I couldn't seem to bear the touch of anything, even the love of friends. No support seemed strong enough. While Mary was sick, I used to go early in the morning to a little church near the hospital to pray. 
there were uh, there the people were working people came quietly to worship. I had been careless with my religion. I had rather cut God out of my life, and I didn't have the nerve at the time to ask him to make my daughter well. I only asked him to help me understand, to let me come in and reach him, and I kept looking for a revelation, but nothing happened. And then, much later, I discovered that it had happened. Right there in the church, I could recall vividly one by one, the people I had seen there, the solemn laborers with tired looks, the old women with gnarled hands. Life had knocked them around, but for a brief moment, they were being refreshed by an ennobling experience. It seemed as they prayed, their worn faces lightened up, and as they became the very vessels of God. Here was my revelation. Suddenly I realized that I was one of them. In my need, I gained strength from the knowledge that they too had needs, and I felt an interdependence with them. I was learning the meaning of love thy neighbor. Truths as old and simple as this began to light up for me like the faces of the men and the women in that little church. When I read the Bible now, I take the teachings of men like Jesus and David and St. Paul as helpful advice of trusted friends on how to live. They understand that life is full of complications and often heavy blows, and they are showing me the wisest way through it. I must help myself. Yes, but I am not such a self-contained unit that I can live aloof unto myself. That was the meaning that had been missing before the realization that I was a living part of God's world of people. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I enjoyed bringing it to you. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I hope you enjoy these readings, or these messages, as much as I enjoy sending them to you. Um, now that Scott and Carol are back, Things will be a little less hectic here, and we'll get things a little bit smoother. We've had uh, learned a couple of lessons. We've learned a couple of it, overcome a couple of little glitches. But I think all in all, we're doing great. I think the church is thriving. I think the church is stronger than ever. Um, and I hope you feel that, too. So until we meet again, take good care of yourself. Take good care of the people around you. Take some time to enjoy this beautiful weather. And until we meet again, God bless you.